So last week we talked about the basics of Ichimoku. We ended up with a few examples, current examples from the market. This is the same thing we'll do today. We'll end up with, uh, over, we'll include some current charts which you might be able to use for your trading. So what is Ichimoku? Ichimoku is a one glance equilibrium chart. As a user, it will tell you the medium term and short term bias of a position instantly at one glance. It shows the momentum, sentiment, and strength of the trend. So Ichimoku is used for trending markets. Either in, uh, price is trending upward or downward, but it's, it is difficult to use in a market that is moving sideways because it might be giving conflicting signals. Uh, we've seen this in the example of MRP last week. So you can use Ichimoku for any kind of market, stocks, forex, even crypto cryptocurrency market, commodities market, etc. So here's an example using the forex market. This Euro FX USD chart shows a trending market. This chart shows that the currency pair is bullish on the 4 hour time frame. The trend changes swiftly from an uptrend where all Ichimoku elements are above the Kumo, including the price, to a downtrend where Ichimoku elements are below the Kumo. And then once again to an uptrend. So it's easy to find the shift in bias using Kumo twists. As you know, Kumo twists happen 26 periods ahead of any impending change in price. So you are able to prepare for a uh, reversal. You're able to buy into a reversing stock if it's going from a downtrend to an uptrend. You're able to sell into a reversing stock as well if it's moving from an uptrend to a downtrend. So it is not effective for use in ranging markets. Again, another example using FX. This USD CAD currency pair shows some sideways movements within its chart. So this was the trading range. And the second trading range. Now here, are signals provided by crossovers. For example, in trading range 1, price crossed above and below the Kijun Sen at least 5 times within the short time frame. Now you can see the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen crossovers at these five areas. So what are you to do? If you were to take them um, as it is, wherein you just buy into or sell into each crossover, you would have been whipsawed in and out of this position. Because in general, this is a sideways trend. Like the example that I gave last week of MRP, price also trended this way before doing a breakout. So you need the confirmation from the Chico span to say whether it's really time to buy. If the Chico span gets out of the trading range, then it's a definite buy. If it stays inside the trading range, then it's still in a sideways position. So if you're trading using Ichimoku within this range, you are more likely to lose money than earn because the signals are very confusing. In addition, since the range is very small, your profit potential will not be worth the trouble. So after all the false twists and crossovers, the Chico span finally breaks out of the range and it made higher highs. Here was the breakout.
this uptrend is where we could apply Ichimoku trading strategies. As long as price is above the Kijun Sen, the uptrend is intact and the trend is bullish. But once we get into a trade, once into a trading range once again, we should avoid using Ichimoku as a trading strategy. Now let's review the elements of Ichimoku. The Tenkan Sen is the pink line. In this case, it's the blue line. If you use the make trade charts, it would be the pink line. Using Investagram's chart, this is the blue line. So it tells you the short term bias. If the price is above the Tenkan Sen, it is bullish. It is below the Tenkan Sen, it is bearish, but we are only talking about the short-term momentum if we are ref referencing the Tenkan Sen. So while the, the, the price is still on a general uptrend, if price grows below the Tenkan Sen, the momentum is questioned. The Kijun Sen is the red line. The Kijun Sen is a medium term equilibrium. So many position traders use this as their support level. If prices are too far away from the, from the equilibrium or from the Kijun Sen, it will tend to return to that level to restore equilibrium. So you can use the Kijun Sen line as a trail stop because if price be breaks below that line, it is likely to be more bearish in the days to come. If price is trending below the Kijun Sen, but above the Kumo, the Kijun Sen serves as resistance. So some traders would use the Kijun Sen crossover as a signal to buy in because they do not want to be stuck in a sideways market. The next is the Chiku Span or the lagging line. This is the lagging line because it's behind the current price by 26 periods. So it provides the range for support and resistance. The movement is bearish if the Chiku span is below the prices. It is bullish if it is above the prices. Now we have the Senku spans A and B. So in a bearish market, the Senku span A is below Senku Span B. In a bullish market, the Senku Span A is above the Senku Span B. The reversal in their position is called a Kumo twist. So what signals do these elements provide? This is the chart for Ayala Corporation. The Ichimoku elements all made bullish crossovers. You have a Tenkan Sen cross, Chiku Span cross, the Kijun cross, Kumo breakout, and the Kumo twist. Currently, Ayala Corporation is still in bullish territory. It is above the Tenkan Sen, so not only is it bullish, it also has strong momentum. This is an old chart of MRP. This was in October. 
we also sh uh, see the bearish signals. There's a bearish Tenkan Sen crossover, bearish Chico Span crossover, Kijun cross, Kumu breakout to the downside, and a Kumu twist. So these are all bearish signals. Now let's look at how these elements warned us of the bullish breakout for to go. Here's the Tenkan Sen for ten, Tenkan Sen cross for to go. You have the Chiku Span crossover, the Kijun Sen crossover, the Kumo breakout, and the Kumo twist. So to go had been stuck in a 6 to 8 peso trading range for about one year from 2016 to 2017. The Chico Span was inside the price range for that amount of time. Now the prices were below the thin Kumo showing weak resistance. So at this area, you are prepared for the possibility of a breakout because the resistance is quite weak. See, in number one, a long bullish candlestick appeared. The candlestick was your trigger because at this point, many bullish crossovers happened. The market followed through with strong buying days later with new trading ranges at higher prices. So this is a series of breakout upon breakout. And all throughout the trend, price was above the Tenkan Sen, showing strong momentum as well. Just, this made a strong run from around 7 pesos. It actually came from 2 pesos in 2015. It rested for a while and from 7 pesos in 2016, it made a run towards 31 pesos. So this is what happened next. After that strong uptrend, it showed us some bearish signals. Tenkan Sen crossover, Chiku Span crossover, Kijun Sen crossover, Kumo breakout, and a Kumo twist. So these are the topics we covered last week. We talked about Ichimoku Kinko Hayo in general, the elements of the Ichimoku system, the Ichimoku signals, trading strategies, setting price targets, trend following, bounce place. So multiple time frame analysis will take that up today. We'll also talk about using Ichimoku with other tools, Ichimoku and divergences, Ichimoku and the Fibonacci ratio, and a trade example. So these are the topics for today, the underlined ones. Just talk about multiple time frame analysis.
Now, for the monthly time frame for MEG, we find that price is trending above the Kumo. It's above the Tenkan Sen, showing momentum in the monthly chart. In the weekly chart, price is still above the Kumo. However, it is it just broke below the weekly support for the Kijun Sen last week. So this shows us possible sideways movement for MEG. Right, the same way um, it did so right here when it broke below Kijun Sen elements, the Tenka Sen and the Kijun Sen might go sideways and form a consolidation pattern right here before resuming its uptrend. So as long as it's still above the Kumo, this is still bullish. However, the momentum or the short-term trend is in question. On the daily chart, we find this confirmation. Now, the weakness in the weekly chart is also evident in the daily chart because we find that price already went below the Kumo in the daily chart. So all this tells us is that for the short term, we will find that MEG will have a hard time resuming its uptrend. It has to complete the consolidation pattern first. So if we are in this, we have to get out of MEG first and wait for a crossover to happen in the daily chart before um, continuing with the uptrend. Because even though price is above the Kumo on the weekly chart, it could still break below that. So the daily chart is an early warning signal that this possibility now could happen. So we have to establish a general rule that higher time frames have more significance than lower time frames. The yearly, the monthly, the yearly is more important than the monthly chart. The monthly chart is more important than the weekly chart. The daily, the weekly chart is more important than the daily chart, and the daily chart is more important than the hourly chart. The hourly chart is more important than the five-minute chart, etc. So, the higher time frames tell us the general direction of the trend. So, if you're a position trader, you'd still be holding MEG because price is still above the weekly Kumo. But if you want to manage the trade, if you're a short-term trader, you have to. Um, wait for a signal in the daily chart to get back into the trade. Because currently, it doesn't have any momentum that will benefit the short-term trader. But if you're a position trader, you'd still be holding MEG until it breaks below the Kumo on the weekly or the monthly chart. Now, of course, it's more important to um, assess what kind of trade you want to do with MEG. Are you a short-term trader? Are you a position trader? Are you an investor for this type of security? So market swings or movements in higher time frames will almost always affect the swings in the lower time frames. So this is the USD JPY Forex chart. The security is bearish and the trend is sideways to down. This is the daily chart. Price had already broken below the Kumo. So if you're going to short this trade, now this would be you find that price is already below the support, so your stop loss would be this red line or the Tenkan Sen line. Now, if you're shorting this, because there's a confluence of ranges as well as the Tenkan Sen line at that area. So these are your trading ranges. Now, so this is a possible bounce area. Again, this is for shorting. Bounce level one is a possibility. Because you find that the Chico span is also located at, at the same uh, level at the left side. So it's the price mo nandito yung Senko span mo. So there's a possibility that the bounce will happen at that area. Yes, there's bounce level two where you find another Senko span B support.
So if price fails to bounce at the first bounce level, you look at the second um, bounce level as a probable support. Now let's look into the lower time frame. This is the five minute chart. For the same day, you would find that on the five minute chart, the trend is the complete opposite. Kanina pababa yung presyo sa daily chart. On the, month, on the five minute chart, the price is on an uptrend. So will you short the trade or would you go long on this trade? You would go long because you must always trade your time frame. If you're using, if you're using the five minute chart, you trade based on the five minute chart. But if you're using the daily chart as we previously showed, you would be shorting it. So never miss, mix your time frames. For example, you're using the five minute chart. Now you should be in and out of the trade using the same five minute chart and do not cross time frames na titing naman daily naman tapos yung five minute for a particular trade. Now focus on one um, time frame for every trade. Now the only reason you would be looking for um, looking at all time frames for the, for a particular trade is if you want to find bounce points, strong resistances, and support areas. But if you're um, into the five minute trade, use the support and resistances in the five minute chart. So, you think uptrend mo, nakita mo na yung price is above the kumo. And it's supported at this line. So that would be your stop loss point if you're going long on the position because it's on an uptrend. And this is your Kijun Sen. That would be your first target level. If it price breaks above that, you look into the target level too. So never mix your time frames. The previous trade on USDJPY was a five-minute trade. That was on an uptrend, while the daily chart was, is on a downtrend. So we were trading against the general trend. So it in daily OLED the chart. So these were the bounce points that we highlighted earlier. Ito yung bilog na brown, yun yung mga nasa five minute chart na mga bounces. While you are able to profit from these swings or the short upward corrections within the general trend, your risk is higher because you're trading against the general trend. Kung baga mag-bounce man siya, maliit lang ang profit potential because the bigger trend is still on a downtrend. So why would you enter a trade na ang liit ng reward mo? No? Papatulan mo pa ba to? Kahit na alam mong aakit siya, would you risk your money in that position when there is a high probability that it will fail because the general trend is a downtrend? So you have to establish the bias across time frames. So bias, parang you just know what the general direction is. But if you want to focus on the five-minute chart, you enter and exit using the one-minute chart lang. Parang alam mo lang na this is a high-risk trade because the general trend is on a downtrend. Nonetheless, if you still want to trade it, you still could, but you have to enter and exit using the five-minute chart if you're into short-term trading. So always trade with a bigger trend. So a more favorable position would be where all time frames are in agreement. So this is what you call multiple time frame confluence. When all time frames agree on the direction of the price. So, mapasok yung confusion pag iba-iba yung sinasabi ng daily chart, ng weekly chart, saka ng monthly chart, tapos magka 5 minute ka, tapos iba-iba yung bias nila, that's a very difficult trade to get into. So, you have to find the security where they all agree so that isa lang ang position mo. You just have to go long all the time. So, here's an example. For pure foods, you want to hold pure foods for a position trade. So you look at the monthly chart to find the bias of the higher time frame. Now, this is bullish because, well, it's not yet 
bullish, but it is showing signs of bullishness because there's already a Tenkan Sen crossover, Chico Span crossover above the price. There's a Kijun Sen crossover. The only element that's missing is a break above the Kumo. But again, pag monthly chart, talagang matagal siya mag-break above the Kumo because um, this is a very long time frame. So on the weekly chart, price is above the, uh, the Kijun Sen, the Tenkan Sen, and the Kumo. On the daily chart, price is also above these elements. So using the daily chart, mahahanap mo yung entry levels mo. Your first entry would be the Tenkan Sen. Your second entry would be the Kijun Sen. Now, so the daily and the weekly chart time frames agree in this scenario. The weekly time, the monthly time frame is telling you that there's still room for an uptrend because the resistance is still at here at the at the Senku A, where the Chico span might hit resistance near 900. So in a sense, this is still bullish because wala pang harang yung Chico Span sa ibabaw. Tapos yung harang mo na pumasok na siya sa ibabaw ng Senku A, hindi pa siya tumatama doon sa susunod na resistance niya. There's still room for an uptrend. Now, so another uh, bullish chart is Metro Bank. So ito monthly chart na Metro Bank. This is a better example than PF because PF still is inside the Kumo. Ito, nasa labas na siya ng Kumo on the monthly chart. So it's bullish. Weekly chart, it's also above the Kumo, so bullish. Daily chart, it is also above the Kumo. In fact, it's also above the Tenkan Sen, so it is strong momentum as well. So what? Do we have to consider kung mag enter ka sa Metro Bank? Just consider that the Tenkan Sen is so far away from the current price. So it could go sideways for equilibrium to be restored. So not only is price away from Tenkan Sen, the Kijun Sen and the Tenkan Sen lines are far apart as well. So these two lines are not in equilibrium. Notice that pag nagdidikit yung mga Tenkan Sen at Kijun Sen, it is followed by a strong move upward. So nag sideways nung nag naging malaking distance dito, no? Nung nagdikit sila ulit, nag breakout ulit. No, tapos ito, nag sideways ulit siya. Nakita mo pareho sila nag flatten. So nagko consolidate. This means price was consolidating. Now there's a strong move here. So, so we have to kung gusto mong pumasok sa position na to, Always use your Tenkan Sen as your stop level. If it's a high momentum trade, but if you want to go in for position trading, use your Kijun Sen level. Now we can also find bearish biases across time frames. An example is Lepanto Consolidated or LC. This is the monthly chart. Price is below a very thick Kumo. The weekly chart shows that price is also below the Tenkan Sen. The so weekly chart is trying to challenge the Tenkan Sen. Magkadikit na sila. Kung makalampas siya dyan sa blue line na yan, ito ang susunod mong target, itong Kijun Sen. No, remember the C pattern that we discussed last week? So trigger mo. Pero what you'd expect from this is kung masira man niya yung blue line, magsa sideways siya kasi resistance mo yung red line. Unless it's until it breaks above the Kumo, this is still officially on a downtrend. In daily chart shows you na yung C pattern sa daily chart. Kinumpleto niya. There's a C here, right? May actually may C dito. From here nag bounce pa akyat. Nag C ulit dito. From the blue line, dumikit sa red line ulit. But again, there's a very thick Kumo above. So since ito, nagdikit na siya sa daily, if you look at the weekly, pwede pa siyang umakit doon. So at this level, this is around 175. What do you notice in the daily chart? Nasaan yung 175? 175 is the Senku 
be resistance of the daily chart. So may confluence of resistances. Yung 174 sa daily, yun din ang Kijun Sen sa weekly. So yan ang confluence. But this is a bearish confluence because confluence of resistances siya. Tapos pag pumunta ka doon sa monthly chart, ano ang 175? Yun din ang Tenkan Sen ng monthly chart. So, puro confluence of resistances. So, key levels to break for LC, 175. And then 22, sa monthly chart. Here's another bearish security. You have PLDT. On the monthly chart, there is resistance at this blue line. No? And then if price breaks above that, it will susunod more resistance. On the weekly chart, you have the same situation, uh, set of resistances. On the daily chart, we have the same resistance. So, anong resistance mo sa daily chart? 1,450, 1,470. So, weekly chart, nasa 1,550. On the monthly chart, you have 1,650. So, there's walang uh, exact uh, price at which, the, or there's no confluence of resistances for TEL, but the range is between 1,500 to 1,800. So, bearish na bearish pa rin to because on all time frames, below the Kumo. So I'd like to show you some multiple time frame confluence, mga may bullish confluences. Let's go to our investagrams. So, itong LTG, let's look at the monthly chart. Ayan. Diba sinasabi ko sinyo last week, ang resistance na lang niya yung nasa daily chart. Na-break niya yun, yung ito yun, yung 1895. Well, last week we discussed this. 1895 yung resistance nito sa daily chart. At yun na lang ang natitira niyang resistance. Five candlesticks later, ito itsura niya yung the week after. That was last Saturday, di ba? So five days later, nandito tayo. Now, dun sa weekly chart, we said that it was the only resistance because wala naman siyang resistance sa weekly chart. As of last week, it was already above prices and all the Ichimoku elements. Dun sa monthly chart, ganun din. Wala siyang resistance. This is the candle for January. This is a very bullish security because it has no resistances to um, consider on the way up. Susunod natin, SMC. Itong SMC, bullish on the monthly chart. Bullish on the weekly chart. Yesterday, nag-consolidate si SMC with this rent candlestick. Pero, in general, it's still above the Kumo and the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen. So, bullish pa rin siya across all time frames. So, kung gusto magdagdag, dito ka mag ano, sa 122, 119. Pwede siyang gumawa ng triangle from here. Mag Mag-sideways siya because the... Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen lines have to catch up and they have to restore equilibrium bago mag-break out ulit. So ito, may confluence ka ng support sa 122 because andyan na rin yung Kumo. 120, 90 yung Kumo. 
122 yung 10 can cent, 119. So ito yung area mo. Always talk about, always look for areas, not specific levels. So pwede ka bumili dyan. That would be your buy area. Yung buy area na yan, if you look at the weekly chart, nandiyan din yung Tenkan Sen, no? Ito yung blue line. So may confluence ka of support at that area. Sa monthly naman, ito yung horizontal support mo. Nandun ang Senku B on the monthly chart. So that is an important area. Yung 119 hanggang 122. So buy there. Pag nag-fail yan, ang lalim ng babagsakan mo dito sa Senku B ng monthly chart. So right now, the support is here. ganda ng Chico Spanya kasi nakawala na siya dun sa lahat ng resistance niya. This is on a monthly. So ayan yung gap na pwede niyang i-fill. Next is BDO. That's the monthly chart. Very bullish as well. Again, it's also detached. Ito sa 143 ang support niya. You have the weekly chart. Uh, strong uptrend pa rin siya. Mahilig siya sa short consolidations. Isang long. May dalawang red candles lang dito tapos nag-resume. Dalawang red candles, nag-resume ulit. Isang candle na lang dito, resume. Isang candle ulit dito na red tapos nag-resume. So ang lakas-lakas ng momentum niya. It has no resistance on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly chart. Itong caution lang natin dito. Yung chico span mo from pointing upward, it started to move sideways. Nakaturo na siya sa side, hindi na siya nakaturo sa taas. So, possible consolidation. Because like I said earlier, nakahiwalay na nga yung presyo sa Tenkan Sen. It has to restore equilibrium. Nandito pa ang Tenkan Sen sa 161 and then 155. Yung 155 na yan is important because look at the weekly chart. Yung 155 na Tenkan Sen sa weekly chart, Nandun din ang Kijun Sen sa daily chart. So you have a confluence of supports across time frames. Weekly and daily point to 155. So that's the best place to buy. Pwede mag-triangle kasi yan. And then you have SM. Yan, bullish on the monthly. Support at 9.10. Bullish on the weekly. Initial support dito sa 1,000. Secondary support dito sa 9.31. The daily. Nag-sideways na rin ang chico span. So, pwede mag-triangle to. So, while it's bullish on the daily and the weekly, pwede siya mag-sideways kasi nasira na yung presyo yung Tenkan Sen. Nasa ilalim na siya. Pwede siya bumalik dito sa Kijun Sen. If this Kijun Sen does not hold, ang susunod yung support ay nandito na sa Kumo. So sideways. Tapos, usually kasi if malayo yung presyo sa Kumo, like ito, di ba, nandito pa yung Kumo sa February 12. If you look down, dito sa baba, nandito yung Kumo, tapos look at the date here, February 12. That is a likely target date for a next uptrend. Same as what happened here. Nag-triangle siya dito. Nag-uptrend 
ang BDO nung dumikit yung kumo sa presyo. That was December 22. Ito, dumikit siya. There's a confluence of supports at this area. Nandito yung Kijun Sen, nandito rin ang kumo. So, since they're a very strong support combined, nagkaroon ng breakout. So, the same thing could happen here. Pagdating ng presyo dito sa um, Kumo at sa Kijun Sen, estimated time of arrivals, February, first week of February, susunod siya magbe-breakout ulit. So, you're able to see the timing as well using Ichimoku. Ito, if you go further back, same thing happened here. Ito, merong magkadikit yung Kumo, saka Kijun Sen at this area, nandiyan yung support niya, tapos nag-break out. Diba? Pumakat sa ibabaw ng Tenkan at Kijun Sen, nag-bound sa Kumo, saka nag-break out. So the Kumo is also an important uh, factor in determining timing. Especially kung makapal ang Kumo like this, sabihin ang lakas-lakas na ng support dito because it's a very thick Kumo. So the breakout was a uh, strong possibility. Ito yung Meralco monthly chart. Above the Kumo, but like we said earlier, nasa range pa, di ba? It's still in, trading in a range. A Chico span is still inside a range. Naka-triangle pa to sa monthly chart. So pag ang Chico span sa monthly chart ay nakalabas dun sa range niya, that's officially on a Uptrend on all time frames. Right now, sideways pa siya sa monthly chart. Sa weekly chart, it's above the Kumo. It's trending above, above the Kumo as well. Pero nasa loob pa rin siya ng range. Parang sa monthly, to sideways siya. Sa so daily, it's just consider the yung malapit lang. Nasira niya yung previous box niya dito. So, bullish siya sa daily. Sa weekly tsaka sa monthly, sideways pa siya. Since sideways siya sa weekly at monthly, what do you notice in the daily as well? Ang laki-laki na may C pattern ka na dito. So, it could revisit this Kijun Sen line. Kasi may C pattern ka na. Tapos, pag nakita niyo ang Tenkan Sen at Kijun Sen ay nag-flatten out like this, naging flat line, that is a signal that the price will consolidate Imbis na nakaturo siya taas, nagturo siya sa side. So, magsa-sideways siya. It's a simple analogy. Kung saan nakaturo ang Chico Span, doon siya papunta. So, we talked about AC already earlier. P-Gold. The daily chart, bullish. Kaka-breakout lang, pero again, it's still stuck inside this range. Weekly. Bullish. It has to break this previous high. So, naka-range pa rin siya. Monthly, naturally, naka-range pa rin siya kasi hindi niya pa nabibreak, hindi pa siya nag all-time high. So we can also have bearish confluences on a multiple time frame. So what are these securities? FGEN, ETC, LPZ, ISM, BSC are some examples. So let's go back. FGEN. And bearish monthly. Bearish weekly. Bearish daily. So, wag nyo na pasukin to. Why would you waste your time on this kind of, ano, bearish stock? O, oh, bearish daily, EDC. Ang kapal ng resistance, yung kumo. Bearish weekly, dahil nasa ilalim siya ng, ito, nasa loob siya ng kumo, nasa ilalim siya ng ibang elements, andito siya sa may, it's hanging on to dear life. Nasa support na siya ngayon ng kumo. 
bearish monthly below ko mo din. Itong mga Lopez sa uh, stocks to, puro bearish. LPZ, monthly, weekly, and daily. Itong ISM, meron siyang, uh, ito daily niya, ibabaw ng kumo, pero sa ilalim pa rin siya ng dalawang lines ng Kijunsen and Tenkansen. Weekly below the kumo. Monthly also below the kumo. BSC, same thing. Below the kumo and the monthly. Pero nakita niyong manipis na yung kumo nito. So, pwede niya nang bantayan sa monthly. Weekly, ito may C pattern tayo dito. It might attempt to go to um, the red line. But it's a small, ano, small range. So, why bother? Ang liit lang ng profit potential mo. Ito yung monthly, ito yung daily. Manipis na rin ang kumo sa daily. So, hihintayin mo na lang mag-breakout yan. But if mag-breakout man siya sa daily, you go to the weekly, strong resistance here and then strong resistance here. This flat 30, number 30 level. Of course, that is if you get through to the Senku A. So, ang dami mong resistance sa pagdadaanan. So, why bother? Sakit lang ang ulo mo kahihintay sa um, pag-breakout niya mga ganyan. There are some securities with conflicting signals. Others with conflicting signals. We have Bloom, RWM, AGI, and MRP. Ito yung some are some time frames are bullish, some time frames are bearish. Itong GSMI, we can add that. Let's look at GSMI. Since Everybody's excited about a possible breakout in GSMI. Kasi kaya exciting to GSMI. If you look at the daily chart, ayan, di ba naka? Parang naka triangle siya. Pero the bias is bullish because it's been consolidating at the upper half of the... Nakita mo tong uh, higher lows na Sumusunod siya sa Kijun Sen, sa pag -akyat. Tapos yesterday, two days ago, it went above the Tenkan Sen. So, hopes were high na. Nag-breakout siya. Parang disappointed mga tao. But this is just a temporary setback kasi um, it's still above the Kijun Sen anyway. So, parang ang kapal na kasi ng support dito sa area na to. So, um... This is, has a strong likelihood na magbe-breakout siya. So this is the daily chart. Yung weekly chart, above Kumo pa rin siya and Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen. It's above the previous range. Ayan, no? yung previous range niya. Sira na niya itong um, high at 27.40. Monthly, ito yung Above Kumo na rin siya. Ito yung conflicting yung 3 months. Ayan. Pinakita natin last week yata to. Na hindi pa rin siya nakakalabas sa Kumo. So, sa quarterly chart. This quarterly resistances malakas sa resistance. That's why we consider it. But once it breaks above that, wala na siyang harang sa taas. So, we have Bloom. Ito, hindi pa siya makalabas dun sa in-identify nating resistance last week. Noon, nauntog siya sa 1180, ano? So, bearish pa siya dun sa 3-month chart kasi nasa ilalim pa ng yung Tenkan hindi pa makalabas. Yung Chikos pa hindi pa makalabas. Sa so 1-month chart, ayan, it's a little more bullish because Chikos pa is already above the Chichimuko elements. Price already broke above the Senko B. So, ito talaga si Bloom matter of time. Ang ganda na ng structure niya. 
Pero hindi niya ma-break-break break yung 1180. So, you can buy above 1180 instead. So, weekly, bullish na siya. Daily, bullish din siya. So, there's a conflict in time frames. So, pag ganyan may conflict, you manage a trade. Well, we were able to, di ba, na-trade natin, kunyari ito, bumili ka sa, dito sa Tenkan Sen Support at 1080. Alam mo na, may resistance sa 1180. So, pwede mo i-trade ito using the different time frames. So, bibili ka dito sa daily, pero since malakas ang resistance sa 1180 sa quarterly, magbenta ka doon. So, range trade using different time frames. You also know that if price breaks above 1180, bibili ka ulit. Hindi na yon range trade. It's already for position trading kasi sira na yung strong resistance. It's a buy and hold already after 1180. So your strategy changes depending on which resistances ang nasira niya. RWM, sa monthly time frame, like I said, <laughs> last week, 450 ang resistance niya kasi nandun yung Resistance nitong, oops, let's go back to our Investagrams. Okay, keep shifting. Um, RWM resistance at 450 pa rin, nandun sa monthly niya. Kasi nandun yung harang nitong Tenkan Sen. So kung bibili ka ng RWM ngayon using... Kunyari, nasa daily chart ka, no? Kasi nasa ibabaw siya ng Kumo, right? Tapos it is above the Tenkan Sen. So, mukhang malakas pa rin siya sa daily chart. Kung bibili ka dito, because it's above the Tenkan Sen, you know that you have to sell at 450 because that is where the monthly resistance is found. Unless it breaks above 450, sideways trend lang to. This is just a range trade. On the weekly chart, ang ganda-ganda rin niya, it's also above, it also met all the signals for a bullish reversal, ano? Lahat ng mga crossovers, ginawanan niya. So, bullish on the daily and weekly, you just know that you have to sell at 450 kasi pwedeng mauntog doon. If it is able to break above 450, you buy on the breakout and then you just keep holding it because your next resistance is already at 660. Depende yan sa slope nitong Chico Span. Kung pa ganun siya, 660 na agad. Pero kung mag sideways movement siya na it'll take time, magpa 550 resistance muna siya at mauuntog siya dyan. But if it goes, um, makes a strong momentum move after it breaks 450, diretsyo na siya sa 650. So you're able to qualify kung anong strategy mo depending dun sa resistances na nakita mo sa chart. So AGI, ito, one month chart, it's already above the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen which makes it bullish pero may resistance siya sa 1993. So kung bumili ka ng AGI because on the daily chart you saw this, it's above the Kijun Sen and above the Kumo. May una ka resistance sa 1622. Last week, nandiyan na siya sa ibabaw, ano? Binawi pa. It started to trend above 1622. Kaya look at this long green candlestick. Daming buyers sa pumasok. Kasi nasira niya yung Tenkan Sen. But it failed to stay above that. So kung bibili ka ng uh, AGI above 1620, Above the Tenkan Sen on the daily chart. No? Because on the weekly chart, above Tenkan Sen naman siya. So, ang inihintay mo yung signal sa daily. If you're able to buy AGI above 1620, you know that you're supposed to sell near 1993 because that is a strong resistance. This is a flat um, Senku B. But flat Senku Bs are magnets to price. So, it's only a matter of time na pupunta siya talaga dyan sa 1990. Pero hintayin mong mag-1620. Since nasira yung 1620 and it went below that last week, so you had to cut that position. Unless you want to wait for a longer period kasi pwede siya mag-sideways-sideways. Buy above 620 again. 
kasi ang reward mo 1990 which is a good risk reward scenario MRP ito din monthly chart ito pumasok na action siya sa Senku A no it took a lot of effort pero nakapasok din siya sa Senku A so ang resistance mo is 1186 Oh yeah, 1180 dun sa monthly. If you look at the weekly, it's above the Kijuns, it's above the Kumo. The daily chart. And it's above the Kijun Sen, above the Kumo, but below the Tenkan Sen. So, what will you do with MRP? You can try to catch it at 806, the Kijun Sen, and sell it near 1181. So, it's not easy to trade pag may conflicting time frames. Ano? Ang dami mong iisipin na resistances. But you always use the higher time frame resistance as your selling point. Kasi yun ang pinakamalakas na resistance. Problema, why would you trade these kinds of um, conflicting signals kung merong mas madali? No? You, can, you can trade MRP. Actually, pumasok na nga siya, malakas siya. You know that you're supposed to sell at 11.88. But which is easier to trade? Is it easier to trade MRP or BDO, which has time frames that agree with each other? Is it easier to trade um, Bloom or SM, na lahat bullish on all time frames, di ba? So go for the easier trades, yung may multiple time frame confluence. So medyo mahaba pa yung webinar natin, so we'll go back to our Ichimoku already. Now let's talk about using Ichimoku with other tools. Meron pa tayong Fibonacci, so this is going to be a long day, long morning. So let's talk about divergences. For this lesson, we will use the ultimate oscillator with Ichimoku. Nandyan sa ano yan, Investagrams, it, it, uh, ultimate oscillator. So it's a momentum oscillator. It captures... Momentum across different time frames. Now, what is the advantage? No, multiple time frames avoids the pitfalls of other indicators. Diba minsan yung RSI, bullish siya isang time frame, bearish siya kabilang time frame. The ultimate oscillator captures the momentum across different time frames. So, you avoid yung mga conflicts with other indicators. So, you can use the ultimate oscillator to find bullish and bearish divergences. So what is a divergence? When a technical indicator disagrees or moves in the opposite direction as the price, it creates powerful technical signals called divergences. There are two kinds of divergences, regular and hidden divergences. There are also two biases for divergences. You have a bullish and a bearish divergence. So regular divergences are signals for possible reversals. No, reversals. So hidden divergences naman signal trend continuation. So dalawang klase, regular divergences signal reversals. Hidden divergences signal trend continuation. So we'll talk about that more later. So let's talk about regular divergences first. Regular divergences are signals for reversals, while hidden divergences signal trend continuation. So ito ang regular divergence. So it's when the oscillator is making higher lows, while the price itself is making lower lows. Let's go here. Ito yan. So price makes lower lows, indicator makes higher lows. So that's a regular bullish divergence. So example, EDC had been on a downtrend for one month until December 2016. Tapos nagkaroon ka ng, ito, the downtrend was signaled or what? Uh, Kumo twist warned of the twist 
warn of the downtrend in November 2016, all Ichimoku elements were below the Kumo. Price had been trending below the Kijun Sen, and it also served as the resistances. There have been attempts for EDC to break above the Kijun Sen line. Ito sa number one, no? Tinry niya i-break, hindi niya ma-break. And then it dropped strongly after it formed a double top. Tapos nasa resistance line pa. So double, doubling bearish signals na yon. It dropped strongly. Tapos nag-rebound. Here was a second attempt to break above the Kijun Sen line. Traders may have been faked out by this move because price actually went above the line and stayed there for a few days. But what happened next was a break below the same line again. But if you looked at the Chiku span, you would have been warned that hindi magiging successful tung breakout na to. Kasi yung Kijun Sen, nasa ilalim pa rin ang price. Hindi nag-breakout ang Kijun Sen. Nag-breakout yung, ano, yung uh, price bar above the Tenkan and Kijun Sen line. Pero yung Chiku span, nasa ilalim pa rin. So that was a warning na hindi valid yung breakout na yan. So you must recognize that the bigger trend always wins. Kung ang bigger trend mo ay downtrend, like in this chart, na daily downtrend, kahit mag-bounce pa siya, mag-uptrend siya ng konti from here to here, it is likely to fail because you have a strong downtrend in front of you on a higher time frame. Of course, hindi naman siya dire-diretso ang bababa. There will always be small bounces in between. But the general trend often prevails is more likely to prevail than the small trend. So, dyan ang importance ng divergences. Pag meron kang nakitang divergences, tapos it tries to break above a resistance, it is more likely to succeed than, like dito, wala naman divergence sa area na to. So, parang hindi mo, hindi mo malaman kung wala kang backup, in other words, wala kang backup na talaga magbe-breakout siya. Because there was no divergence. And then, dito, nagkaroon ng divergence. And it, the, the ultimate oscillator requires three um, elements for a buy signal. Yung una... Dapat may bullish divergence between the ultimate oscillator and the price. So, yan yung bullish divergence mo. The price forges a lower low. The ultimate oscillator forms a higher low. We need a higher low in the oscillator because it shows that the momentum to the downside is getting weaker. Yung susunod, the low of the, second, the, sec, the, low of the bullish divergence should be below 30. This is the 30 level, right? Yung low ng divergence, which is this, is lower than 30. So this ensures that prices are already oversold as well. Hindi lang siya nagpakita ng divergence signal, it also showed an oversold signal. So the low should be below 30, so that's a condition that's already met. Third is the, oscillate, the oscillator rises above the high of the bullish divergence. So yung oscillator... Yung low niya, no? It rises above the high of the bullish divergence. It broke above that resistance. Una below 30. Ito yung ilalim na unang divergence. Ito yung high of the bullish divergence. Ito yung low. Ito yung high. Tapos yung ultimate oscillator, ayan, nag-bounce. Tapos nagkaroon ng isa pang higher low above that high of the bullish divergence. So that, again, three things. Bullish divergence. Um, ultimate oscillator should be below 30. And the oscillator rises above the high of the bullish divergence. Ito yung high of the bullish divergence. Ito yung low of the bullish divergence. So these are the three things that signal a reversal using ultimate oscillator.
So what happened here? After that divergence was formed, we see the following bullish signals. You have the Tengan Sen crossover, price crossover above the Kijun Sen. There's a Kuma twist, a Kuma breakout, sorry, Kuma breakout, a Chico span breakout, and then the Kuma twist. From then on, EDC started to reverse and price trended from a low of 489 to a high of 612. It hit a strong resistance line and then consolidated in that area. And then all the um, fundamental news about the tender offer happened and price dropped. Well, it made the high above eight, around 8 pesos and then price dropped thereafter. So granting that we already found the divergence and we already found the bullish Ichimoku elements, can we just buy at any price? Can you enter anywhere as long as it's bullish? So what we want as traders is to be able to maximize our profits and minimize our risks. So we must find the lowest possible entry for the time period and sell at the highest possible price. So there are three things we should consider when making an entry. First is the level. Levels are supports and resistances. Support is the best level to buy because the risk is low. The resistance is the best place to sell because the upside risk is also low. So if divergences are present at support levels, then it would make our entry more favorable. The signal is, that, is what will tell you that the price will likely bounce. It tells you that it's about time to enter the market. Parang just prepare to enter. So if you see several reversal candlesticks testing the support many times, tapos a bounce done, then it tells you that the support holds and could be a good bounce point. Parang ito yung um, signal yung tells you the likelihood that a bounce will happen. The trigger is what confirms your bias. Parang ito yung go signal na bumili ka na. For example, after price retest support several times, it bounces with a bullish engulfing candlestick that breaks above the previous range, then it is a trigger to buy. So you have the level, the signal, and the trigger. These are the three things you should consider when making an entry into a, into a stock. You can also use this as your exit, exit um, elements that you should consider when making an entry and as well as an exit. So ito example. EDC kanina, nagka-bullish divergence ka, di ba? So may signal, mayroon ka ng ano, um, this signal's possible uh, reversal. So ano yung level of entry mo? Your level is the Kumo breakout. The Kumo top served as support. The signal, the fact that the support at the Kumo holds. The trigger is a strong bounce of the Kumo and the break above the Tenkan Sen with the bullish engulfing candlestick. So the level just tells you saan ka bibili. Signal tells you na malapit ka nang bumili. Ang trigger sinasabi sa iyo bumili ka na. For example, AGI. Price had been on a downtrend. Now at this point, price tried to break above the Kumo but failed. The Chico Span also break, failed to break above the price bars. So nagkaroon ng, so what, what happened? Kaya nag-fail itong breakout na to kasi wala namang bullish divergence previously. Ano? Wala naman ang happen na previous diver, bullish divergence dito. The bullish divergence happened afterwards. So meron ka ng possible reversal in the works. The low of the bullish divergence was below 30. Yan yung condition natin kanina. First is the bullish divergence. 
Second, the, bullish, the low of the bullish divergence is below 30. The third is the second high of the bullish divergence is huh? this is the high of the bullish divergence. The ultimate oscillator breaks above the high of the previous bullish divergence, the higher low. And what happened? Nakaroon ng Tenkan-sen crossover. And then nakaroon ng Kijun-sen crossover as well, the same area. The ultimate oscillator started making higher lows. Tapos may Kuma twist, 26 periods forward. Price breakout above the Kumo. And also a Chico Span breakout. What followed was an uptrend with support at the Tenkan Sen line. Nasira yung Tenkan Sen na yun, napunta siya sa Kijun Sen. So yun ang naging support niya. Nonetheless, it's still in an uptrend above the Kijun Sen. Ang susunod ay ang regular bearish divergence. This is the opposite of a bullish divergence. Ang bullish divergence nangyayari sa downtrend because it signals a possible reversal from downtrend to uptrend. Ang bearish divergence happens in an uptrend because it signals a possible reversal from an uptrend to a downtrend. No? Price trends up while the oscillator trends down. So price and RSI also disagree. And this will be confirmed, the bearish divergence, um, like I told you earlier, ang bearish divergence, signal lang yan na possible na reversal from upside to down, uptrend to downtrend. There are many securities na kahit may bearish divergence siya, tuloy pa rin ang pag-akit niya. Diba kasi parang warning signal lang yun na malapit na. But when do you actually know kung kailan na talaga yung, what would be your trigger to sell? Like, for example, mga their securities like TUGS, JGS, etc. na kahit may bearish divergence siya, tuloy ang pag niya. Pero nung lumabas na Ichimoku bearish signals, that was the time na kailangan magbenta ka na. That is your confirmation na the regular bearish divergence is already going to take effect. Di ba like our previous example on MRP? Nagka-bearish divergence siya from... 8 pesos to 10 pesos, pero hindi bumaba yung presyo niya, price only broke down after the bearish elements in the Ichimoku showed up. So ito, the chart is on an uptrend after the bullish Kumo twist and the Kumo breakout. Price had been trending above the Kijun Sen and that line served as the support. There have been attempts to break below the Kijun Sen line. This is number one. No, this was the first attempt to break. Price was able to break below Kijun Sen, but it was supported by the Kumo. Nag bounce agad siya doon. Nung nag-bounce siya, hindi lang siya basta nag-bounce, it made a bullish engulfing candlestick. Tapos, sinira pa niya yung resistance na Tenkan Sen at Kijun Sen at the same time. Here's a second attempt. Again, may, may bearish divergence na to ng time na to. Eh. Nakita niyo tong bearish divergence na yan. Hindi pa rin siya bumababa. Kahit may mga bearish divergence siya, at this point, my double bottom, nag-bounce din sa Kijun Sen. Third attempt. Price tried to break below the Kijun Sen, but this time it succeeded. This was a bearish signal. Doon sa unang, sa first two, kahit may bearish divergence, di naman niya sira yung Kijun Sen, so hold ka pa rin. Nang third, nasira na niya yung Kijun Sen. And even the Chico Span also made a bearish crossover. So 
So we need a probability booster aside from Ichimoku signal. Divergences could increase the probability that the trend will indeed change. So ito yung bearish divergence. Nagsimula pa siya dun sa 700 area. May bearish divergence na siya, pero nakaabot pa rin siya sa 900 nonetheless. Kasi hindi pa rin sira yung Ichimoku support, yung Kijun Sen. Now, if there is a strong case for bearishness, then we need to sell our position. There are three steps to a sell signal. First is the bearish divergence. Second, the high of the bearish divergence should be above 70. So this makes sure that the price is already overbought or at extreme conditions. So in this chart, Ultimate oscillator is already too high. It's already above 70. Third, the oscillator falls below the low of the bearish, bearish divergence. So nag lower high yung oscillator. It fell below the low, below the high of the, sorry, below the low of the bearish divergence. So this confirms a reversal from an uptrend to a downtrend. So, in a bearish, a bearish divergence does not necessarily mean a sell, but if you find all the bearish crossovers happening along with the bearish divergences, then it would be a good time to sell your security already. At this point, my double top pa siya. Tapos nagkaroon ng bearish kuma twist. Nagkaroon ng Tenkan Sen crossover, Kijun Sen crossover din. Tapos price broke below the Kumo. So what resulted was a downtrend after the bearish divergence. Usually naman pagtapos ng bearish divergence, magsa sideways muna ka sandali. So may time ka pa mag-isip, maghintay ng signals. Because it usually goes on a sideways movement before an actual um, breakdown. So the bearish divergence helps boost our conviction of a reversal to the downside along with the bearish Ichimoku elements. Ngayon, kung magbibenta ka, do you sell at any point since you're expecting a downtrend anyway? You need to identify again what are the level, the signal, and the trigger. So yung bearish divergence, ano? So the level... Is the resistance level at Senku B? That would be your sell point. The signal would be the bearish candlesticks at the Senku B. Sa taas, ang daming beses niya tinry mabreak yung Senku B pero hindi niya mabreak. So, that's a signal na downtrend. Trigger it was the long red candlestick. Would be your trigger to sell. So, level signal and trigger happens in an uptrend. You can also spot that in a downtrend. So that resulted in a downtrend. Here's another example. Using the Forex market, New Zealand dollar yen. So may bullish divergence dito, signaling a reversal. Tapos may kumu breakout. Tenkan Sen crossover and Kijun Sen crossover. Here's Chico Span breakout. Kumo twist. Price trended pero nagkaroon ng bearish divergence. So may chances na magkaka-reversal na because nagkaroon na ng bearish divergence. Pero hindi ka pa magbebenta kasi wala pang signal. Wala pang trigger tsaka wala pang level. So ito yung possible level mo na. Kasi nag-double top dito tapos um, hindi siya makalabas dyan sa area na yan. Tapos nagkapangalawang bearish divergence na to. So you now have two bearish divergences. There's also a double top. 
at this point, there's a Kumu breakout. Kijunsan crossover. Tenkansan crossover. Kumu twist. Tapos may Chico span crossover po baba. This resulted in a downtrend. Hmm, mali yung heading ko dito. This should be bearish divergence. So yeah, may bearish divergence dito si CNPF. Above 70 yung ultimate oscillator. Nag-lower high. Double top. Usually find double tops talaga sa, sa mga ano eh, pag malapit na matapos. Again, you have your Ichimoku element signaling confirmation of the bearish divergence. So, nagkaroon ng downtrend. What else? PPC. <coughs> bearish divergence. Ang level mo is the resistance level at Kijun Sen. And then you have the signal is the lower highs. Your trigger is the long red candlestick. So we've already discussed regular divergences. Let's talk about hidden divergences. Yan. Hidden divergences, mahahanap yan sa either an uptrend or a downtrend. It tells you continuation. So if your existing trend is bullish, a bullish hidden divergence tells you that magtutuloy-tuloy ang uptrend. If your existing trend is bearish, a bearish hidden divergence tells you that the downtrend will continue. So these hidden divergences happen at correction or consolidation points within the uptrend or the downtrend. So hidden divergences are the trend followers' best friend. So, ito yung example natin ng hidden bullish divergence. This is a globe. Hidden bullish divergence, the price is in a strong trend, no? Yan, present lahat ng elements. Tapos ano nangyari? At this point, price retested the Kumo. No? Tung, nung nag-breakout siya, nag-retest yung Kumo dun, yung price nag-retest ng Kumo, tapos it made higher lows. So your level is the key dyan, Sen. Ito naging support niya, itong red line. Signal, Rejection at the support or indecision. Ito may indecision, may doji dito, no? So, you're looking for clues dun sa signal. Ano yung mga possibility na mag-hold to? First, ang daming candlestick dun sa Kijun Sen. Ilang beses na nag-bounce. Susunod, may doji pa dun sa dulo. So, you have your level, level in the signal. Ang trigger mo is the violation of the indecision by a green candlestick. No? Yung indecision, nag-decide na candlestick after is a green one tapos it crossed above the Tenkan Sen resistance so anong nangyari dito? di ba paakit siya dito sa time na to from here to here tapos nag sideways pag sideways movement kasi hindi mo alam kung nagsa sideways siya tapos bababa o magsa sideways lang siya tapos aakit siya ulit that's where you find hidden bullish divergence useful kasi dito nung nag sideways siya the hidden bullish divergence told you that it is going to continue going up. Hindi na siya bababa. Nag-pause lang. So it's a trend follower's best friend because it tells you na nag-hold yung support. You have a level, a signal, and a trigger. So on top of that, yung bullish hidden divergence where the price made higher lows and the oscillator made lower lows tells you that okay pa yan. Pwede pa umakit yan. 
So you want to enter at the best possible price and also enter at the best possible time. Because these are two things that the trader holds valuable, price and time. So ayaw mo maghawak ng position na matagal, di ba? Ayaw mo naman din bumili na magkakat ka lang pagkatapos. So, we bought at the Kijunsen level. That was the level. The signal is the doji and the bounce of the Kijunsen. The trigger is the breakout of the consolidation. From then on, the Kijunsen served as the trend line. Ngayon, ano nangyari? Ito ulit, meron ulit sa pang bullish hidden divergence dito. Again, nag-sideways siya, pero it told you na tutuloy pa yan. Pwede pa. Ano nangyari dito? Nagkaroon ng bearish divergence dito sa area na to. Yan. So, yan ang possible reversal, which did happen. Nag-reverse nga si Globe. Susunod yung MAC. Same thing, bullish hidden divergence. Ito yung 17 pa lang si MAC. Anong nangyari? It even went to 24.75. Kasi yung mga pauses in between, hahanap lagi kayo ng bullish hidden divergence para malaman kung tutuloy pa. This is good for position traders na gustong maghawak na matagal. So what's a hidden bearish divergence in contrast? It occurs in a downtrend. Price makes lower high but the oscillator is making a higher low. A hidden bearish divergence signals continuation of the downtrend. So ito ang hidden bearish divergence. Itong example, X. And diba in the first place, price already broke below the Kumo. So bearish na to. Dito pa lang bearish na siya. He tried to break out, pero hindi yan na nagawang mag-break out pataas. Tapos nagkaroon ng bearish hidden divergences. It tells you that the downtrend will continue. Which it did. Tapos meron pang mga signals dyan. Ang Ichimoku, puro mga, puro mga bearish signals. Nakita natin. So they all agree na bearish siya. Ang level mo would be the Tenkan Sen resistance zone. Yan ang harang. Kaya yan ang level at which to, to sell. Parang um, that's the, if you're on a downtrend, the best possible area to sell is at the resistance. Kasi it can't go higher than that. Kung naipit ka, just want to cut your losses, the Tenkan Sen is the resistance zone to sell into. The signal na hindi siya talaga aakyat is the rejection at the, sig at the Tenkan Sen. Ilang beses siya nauntog doon to many candlesticks, oh. Trigger is the bearish Kumo breakout. Ito una, ito. Yung beses siya nauntog sa Tenkan Sen, break below siya sa Kumo. So, it's a definite sell. Itong sa X na to, it April pa yung chart na to, it went, it made a bullish divergence here. Tapos, nag-reverse to the upside, nag-1036 pa to from a low of 7. No? Tapos yan, nagkaroon din ng bullish chick Ichimoku elements at the same time na nag-bullish divergence. But right now, X already went, bumalik ulit sa 5, ano? tapos nag-break out ulit. So here's another example. Ito naman, bullish divergence tells you of a reversal from downtrend to uptrend. If you have multiple bullish divergences, mas maganda yon kasi ang daming beses niyang pinakita sa yun na, ang daming beses niya niretest yung support. This is a this has two bear, bullish divergences which resulted in an uptrend. So level support zone, signal rejection at support, trigger long green candlestick. 
So this is a bullish hidden divergence that you can find with, within the uptrend. So hindi ka matatakot kahit nasira siya yung support niya na Tenkan-sen dito. Dahil may bullish hidden divergence ka, you'll expect it to continue going up. Kasi wala pa naman ding Ichimoku bearish signals. Until this happened, na nagkaroon ng bearish divergence dito, confirmed by signals, will give you a downtrend. Now, examples of divergences. Hidden and regular bearish divergence. Same highs. Dun sa oscillator, tapos lower highs sa um, price. So that's a bearish divergence, bearish hidden divergence. And then nagkaroon ng regular bullish divergence sa area na to. This caused a reversal. And then nagka bearish divergence dito ulit. Pababa naman siya. Accompanied by bearish Ichimoku signals. Yan. So, we're done with the divergences. Yan na. Nag-downtrend na siya. So, let's talk about lesson 2. Using Ichimoku with a Fibonacci ratio. Fibonacci retracement was based on the Fibonacci sequence. So ito yung gagamitin nating aspect, di ba? There are Fibonacci arcs, there are Fibonacci fans, there's Fibonacci retracement. There's several ways to apply Fibonacci. Gagamitin natin ay ang Fibonacci retracement, which is also based on the Fibonacci sequence. It is based on the idea that markets will retrace a predictable portion of the move, after which they will continue to move in the original direction. So Fibonacci retracement uses horizontal zones to indicate supports and resistances. These areas are calculated by locating the high and low of the chart, or vice versa for reverse Fibonacci retracement. After a significant move up or down, the new support and resistance levels are often at or near these lines. Example, ito yung chart ng nickel. Diba from the high, ginawa natin yung Fibonacci retracement niya. Ito yung low, ito yung high. So gagawa tayo ng retracement from zero yung nasa taas, 100 yung nasa baba. Nag-retrace siya. But you notice that there are small bounces that happened on the Fibonacci lines. So laging may bounce sa Fibonacci, especially at the strong areas, pero some bounces are weaker than others. Like ito, nag-bounce to sa first 236, ano? Nag-bounce siya. Was unable to sustain the bounce. Nahulog siya sa 38.2. This is a probably an intraday bounce, na very weak bounce. It found support at 647. So, papansin nyo kung mag intraday kayo, may bounce pa rin yan sa 38.2 because there are willing buyers at that area. But since the bounce, ito may, may weak dito, which means there was a bounce. Pero since hindi na sustain, Nahulog siya sa 50%. There's a slight bounce again. Nahulog siya sa 618. Another bounce. So, um, these are resist supports nonetheless na pwede niyong itrade. Yung bounce sa, sa 618 Fibonacci, is the, this is the golden ratio. So, you'd expect the bounce to be stronger kasi golden ratio ang 618 level. It is the area where a bounce is likely to be stronger.
So, pagsasamahin natin ngayon ang Fibonacci at ang Ichimoku for stronger conviction on finding supports and resistances. So, let's do a case study on X. If you bought some shares here at the low of 7, this was a chart from April. You're looking for a price where you could sell your shares. So we'll plot the areas where we might find resistance. Previously, we discussed how the Chico span marks support and resistances. We also know that previous supports become resistances. The first resistance was near the 1030 level. So any yeah, resistance one. This level was marked by the Chico span previously as resistance level because it was support on October 2016. So, Senko span A. At the same time, do not bounce yung previous candlesticks niya. So, may Chico span resistance sa area na to kasi dyan nag-oscillate yung price previously. In November. So price, if price is able to break above that, it will be met by resistance to, nandito naman ang Senko Span B, nandun din ang Chico Span. Kung mabreak pa niya yan, ang susunod niya resistance ay yung Chico Span Resistance again doon, yung consolidation area, as well as a Senko Span A. Now, this is your next resistance, your Senko Span B, where you also find at the left the consolidation area of the Chico Span. Now, the next slide will show you the same chart, but including the Fibonacci levels. These are plotted in reverse from the low to the high. So note that I plotted the candles from body to body. So ito yung susunod na chart. When plotting Fibonacci numbers, you have to be consistent. Either you plot from the body of the candle high to the body of the candle low, or from the wick of the body Oh, sorry, or from the wick to the wick. It's a low and high. So, wag pagahaluin yung wick tsaka yung body. Okay, so this chart shows the supports and resistances using Fibonacci levels. Resistance 1 is near the 10 peso level at 107. Sorry, at 1007. Ito. Kung mag-bounce siya, ito yung una mong resistance, ano? So remember that supports and resistances are not exact levels but areas. The Senku A is located in the same zone. Kung nasa 23 Fibo, nandun din yung Senku A. So this level approximates the resistance level. So ito yung same resistance as a previous chart. So resistance 2 in this chart is located at the 38.2% reverse Fibonacci level at 12. This is also where the Senku Span B is located, which was the resistance from the previous chart. Resistance 3 is at this area where you find the 618 re reverse Fibonacci level. You will also find the Senko Span A in this area. Resistance 4 was at the 17 peso level at the 786 Fibonacci level. 
Again, this is the same area where you find the Senko span B at 1650 in the previous chart. So we know that the Ichimoku system also lines up with the Fibonacci ratio. So when you're looking at the tracements, you can look at these flat tops and flat bottoms of the Kumo and know that it's probably lining up with a 50% or a 61.8% retracement level or the 38.2% level. So the Fibonacci lines are also good levels for you to look at on retracement. Combined with the Senku Spans A or B or even the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen, you will find these as good support and resistance levels, and therefore entry and exit points. So here's an example with AGI, another one. So in the previous chart, we used reverse Fibonacci in confluence with Ichimoku elements to find confluences of supports and resistances. This allows us to find sell areas for swing trading. So in this next chart, we will use Fibonacci levels along with Ichimoku elements to find entries. So kailangan natin humanat ng strong support areas. So here, this is the chart of AGI. We drew the hindi siya reverse Fibonacci ngayon. So we're assuming that kunyari nandito pa tayo sa top. Tapos sagahanap tayo ng bounce points on the way down. Saan tayo bibili at magbabounce trade? So kunyari nandito ka sa 32 pesos. This would be your zero. Your 100 is the bottom. Itong previous low na to. So hanapin mo saan pwede mag-bounce. Because as you found in the example of nickel, laging may bounces. Ang difference lang is gano'ng kalakas yung bounce at every area. So ito yung una mong support. Yung 38.2% Fibonacci level, which is also where you find Senku Span A. So this is a good, good uh, buy level. As you notice, Price bounced. Tapos ang naging resistance niya would be the higher Fibonacci level where you also find the Senku Span B. So may confluence dito ng resistance, may confluence dito ng support, so you trade this range. So pagtapos yung mag-bounce, nahulog na naman siya. Kaya pag bounce trade, talaga magbebenta ka kaagad. You don't hold it for a long time because this is already on a downtrend. Kumbaga, you're just taking advantage of the small swings in between the downtrend. So here's your next support level where you could, we could buy. And dito ang support 2, you have the 50% level and the Senku Span B. So, yan ang support mo. Dito siya nag-bounce, oh, this area. So, magsisell ka dito sa confluence ng Senko Span A at saka ng 23.8%, uh, sorry, ng 38.2% Fibonacci level. Bili ka dito sa 50%, sell ka dito sa 38.2%. Since may confluence sila with the Senku spans, you have stronger conviction. Ayon susunod, nahulog ulit. Buy ka dun sa support. Nakita yun dito sa 61.8. Walang confluence ng Ichimoku. Nag-bounce man siya. It's a weak bounce. The stronger bounce was the area where you find a confluence of Ichimoku and Fibo. So this is your buy three. Dito, nag-strong bound siya dito. Itong long green candlestick na to. It was met by resistance, then a 618. Tapos nandiyan din yung Kijun Sen. And then it continued to 
um, consolidate at the 786 level. Tapos, saka siya nahulog ulit. So, at this area, naging resistance yung same support na 1546 dati. Nandun din yung Kumo resistance, yung Senko B. Currently, it is already above this level, but it is still hindered by the 16 peso resistance. So, pinakita natin kanina kung ano importance yung 1620 with regards to Ichimoku. So here, here's a current example. This one uses Fibonacci extensions. Iba yung we can use uh, Fibonacci to measure bounce points. Yung zero nasa taas, sa peak, yung 100 nasa baba. Pag reverse Fibo naman, zero nasa baba, 100 yung nasa peak. When you want to know kung gaano kataas ang iba bounce. So yung most recent price is the one at the zero. And yung mas lumang price was the previous pick at 100. So ngayon naman, Fibonacci extension, pag tumakbo na yung stock, or pag tumakbo na yung presyo, susukatin natin yung high and low nung previous range niya. Ito yung previous ng range. This is IMI. So we measured the high, dun, ginamit natin yung body to body, hindi yung wick. Again, it's your discretion kung magbabody to body kayo o mag-week to week. So, ito yung high niya, 865. Yung low niya sa 47. 477. So, that is 1 sa taas, 0 sa baba. The extensions tell you kung saan yung mga resistances, kung saan pwede mauntog yung presyo on the way up. Kasi lahat yan, ano eh, um, pwedeng untugan. But the area where you find the, uh, it is likely to bounce, yung sa mga bounce place or hit resistances on bounce place, are areas where you find confluences with Ichimoku once again. So ito yung una, di ba, nag-breakout siya dito. At the same time, nag-breakout din yung Chiku Span. Broke a previous high. Tapos, dire-direcho siya nag trend dyan, it met resistance at this area. Nandito ang 6, 1, uh, uh, 300%, <coughs> sorry, Fibonacci. And then, nandyan din ang resistance, nandyan din ang resistance nung um, I'm sorry, it went up there, so nauntog siya dun sa 300, Tapos na nag-bounce back siya, it was met with resistance. So, yun nung nahulog pala siya, it was met with support at this area, the confluence of 786 Fibonacci and the Kijun Sen. Nag-bounce siya dyan. Also, my confluence. It resulted in a strong bounce. It went all the way up. It met resistance at 3782 Fibonacci. Nung nahulog ulit siya, itong, itong, itong area na to, it was met support with support at 3272 na nandun din ang Tenkan Sen. It went all the way back up to 4618 Fibonacci which is a strong resistance. Tapos, na nahulog siya, it's met with support again at the Kijun Sen level. That is also where the 3272 Fibonacci level is located. So again, we always find for find resist, supports and resistances. Hindi lahat ng areas ng bounce ay may support na kasama yung Fibonacci. But the stronger ones, the stronger bounces are the areas where there is a confluence. So pandagdag conviction lang yan. For strong downtrends, kunyari malakas ang bagsak, dun ka sa may confluence sa low because although kunyari itong 382 is a strong support, it's not as strong as 
uh, confluence of supports pag may kasamang Ichimoku. Itong high na to, of course, walang confluence dito kasi sumusunod lang ang ang uh, Ichimoku level sa price. If it's making all-time highs, hindi siya, wala, siya, wala ka makikita ang resistance sa Ichimoku dyan kasi all-time high yan. It's because Ichimoku lines are just an average of prices. So dito, wala ka talagang confluence dyan. Kung hindi, Fibonacci lang. Magagamit mo yung Ichimoku levels for bounces. However, kung downtrend yung stock, makakakita ka ng Fibonacci resistances. And ang Ichimoku resistances along with Fibonacci levels. But on all-time highs like this, what IMI did, wala kang resistance dito kundi Fibonacci lang. Alright, so that's the webinar for today. Do you have any questions? Wala? Okay, so if there's no, there are no questions, I'd like to dismiss this class. See you. Tomorrow, or just email me this weekend. Tapos, I'll upload some new charts again. The Ichimoku Reviewers Group, you can post your questions there. Um, marami pa rin nagtatanong doon sa regular chat natin sa Simple Trader. Pwede rin kayo mag-post doon. But the Ichimoku Reviewers kasi, I guess we understand each other because all the people there have already taken the webinar doon sa regular group, hindi pa lahat. So, you can post your question anywhere, but preferably in that Ichimoku Reviewers Group. So thanks again for attending today's webinar. I'll see you on Monday. Just email me at cmferia at yahoo.com or at uh, send me a message at Discord for questions. So thank you very much and goodbye.